to, to Heroes Heart Celebrity Clash League in-house league. My name is Bahamut. I will be one of your casters this evening. Joining me is going to be McIntyre. How you feeling? Are you ready for some Heroes of Storm action? Super pumped. I know last week we had a PTR game where the players got a chance to play those new towers. This week we're actually going to bring it back. We're playing on the normal servers. So we're going back to normal tower damage, normal, normal I guess, aggro, right? Mm -hmm. Um but overall, excited. Really, I'm looking, looking forward to these Mondays every week and casting and seeing these players show up. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a really fun best of five series. Uh, there's some money on the line for these players. They're not just playing for nothing. They got a little pizza money coming in for them. But we got to find out who's going to be playing this evening as we are going to be having 10 talented players joining us this evening on the left-hand side. For the members of uh, Black Hole, it's going to be Liam, Tremor, Frosty Wind, Carbon, and Centurion. And then on the side of Archon, it will be Valimar, Chuggy, Weary Day, Unaverted, and Tiger JK. So we are going to go ahead and get on into game number one of our first game of the Best of Five series, and we are going to be taking these teams to Dragonshire. Uh, we thought that this would be a nice, fun little map. We'll throw it to coin flip on this one, so it is going to be determined randomly, and then from that point on, we're going to be having loser picks map or loser picks, you know, first pick, and then we'll go on from there. So on and so forth. But as McIntyre pointed out, we are on the live server, so no shenanigans. These players are probably going to be picking up their comfort picks, maybe some things that they, they think are strong here that they might be able to shine with as well. Um, but Dragonshire, we've been seeing a lot of play. You know, Liam's been picking up Chen to mm -hmm. control top lane. Rexar is a big threat. Um, Dahaka's considered often. There's going to be the Zul ban. And even Deathwing. Deathwing is is quite quite the nuisance here. Now, Skyfall, you can't poke indefinitely at the channel because it doesn't give you vision, but you still have a lot of good poke. You have maneuverability, any of that 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 global aspect. What do you kind of lean into when it comes to your solo lane here, McIntyre? Definitely love having the global on this map. Um, it, it's just one of those things that allows you that momentum on both sides of the map at pretty much all points in the game. It also allows you to, you know, maybe rotate bottom, um, try for an attempt at a pick, and then global back to the top lane, right? Mm -hmm. It just changes up the flow of the map, I think is something that I really like as solo laners in this map. As, you know, controlling the top lane, you basically play the map in two ways, right? You either have a character that controls top forever, and then the other team has to break that, or you have a character that <clears throat> kind of concedes the top shrine and puts pressure elsewhere on the map right so as we see these two teams drafts their calm so we'll look out and try to figure out which team is going to be that you know dominant top side heavy mm -hmm. um and which team is going to be the one that's kind of responding and, and playing elsewhere on the map yeah because oftentimes you know in those in those dominant top lanes you see some things being picked up like Maev, genji in the past um zeratul's uh, uh, popular in this map as well mm -hmm. to be able to rotate into top lane and maybe get some picks junkrat actually has some really good disruption uh control over these points is great and i'm i'm really happy about this actually being the first pick it opens up a lot of avenues doesn't really show any of their draft i mean yeah they could play you know controlling or they can play aggressive with junkrat he is he's kind of flexible in that in that role but i i like that as a range assassin to open things up with it's an interesting first pick right i feel like that's not mm -hmm. something that we see every day no, um, it's, it's like anna joanna yeah Andrew here, here you go <laughs> the anna yeah. jana uh you know just a duo kind of drafted uh yeah junkrat leaves the comp kind of really open it's potential to even try to stick him in the top lane if he has a favored matchup right True. um it's definitely a flexible pick here and and it is one that does really well kind of in the delta and towards the bottom lane right you set up the traps you set up yep. you have yep. something like an etc that can slide in and you can follow up on top of that um and even a stukov right if they walk into a trap they might just get stukov comboed and just get picked immediately and anna has a pretty hard time right no cleanse until 13 at least yep, um so there well here we go as we see samuro that's so that's so targeted oh my god that's such a wild targeted is man. it i mean because like samuro's like he's not that great but realistically though like if left uncontested samuro can just run it down yeah like, that is that it's just wild that they just be like you know what we really <laughs> really don't want to deal with this because it's not that popular but at this tier of play it's such a really heads up ban um i but as you were saying like the other thing too i wanted to know you're saying you know etc stukov combo right there even then let's let's think of the potential setups if you go into chattering teeth and sticky wicket so you have the chattering teeth with the chase and you have the yeah. sticky wicket 
second silence on top of that. So, and then that just gives more time for ETC to power slide in and Stuka have to lay down the lurking arm and, and just throw out that weighted push till too. So I think this right now is a terrifying composition coming out from Archon, but we do need to, you know, respect the fact that it is on a Jaina. So that's a great mm -hmm. duo right there. It's a lot of power post 10. And then what are you going to grab in there? Maybe a Garrosh for a Warlord's Challenge? Ooh, we actually see a Diablo in Maev. So double dive. I really, really like that. Also, Maev has some control. Diablo can kind of turn around if maybe they dive onto the Ana, dive onto the Jaina, can get back into that backline and help them out with the Shadow Charge. So it's really good. And and same thing with Maev. She's got the Spirit of Vengeance to get close to the friendly team. So I really like that. Plus, they're really holding out on top lane to force the enemy team to show their top lane. Then they can adjust from there on the side of Black Hole. It's really, really heads up drafting coming out from both sides. I also really like Mev into ooh, and we see the keg W. There it is, just a blind did keg, Beckwin, a blind did, one, right? Like just did, blind. Did Beckwin put keg W in the stream? <laughs> did he? I don't. He might have. Yo, Imran also coming in with a thirteen months. Oh, thank you so much, Imran. Beckwin. Let's go, Frost Tiger Wind J K. <laughs> Frost Tiger Wind J K. Um, but it is a raw, it's a it's a raw chin here, right? Now we get it. We yeah, get we yeah, get a absolutely. a choice of counter pick, and we see an artist picked up. And I'm not entirely sure how the matchups goes because I haven't seen it. But I I can only assume that it's just artist is going to probably take rune tap at seven and just perma stick on chin and beat him up um, until his mana runs out, right? And if we take the level one D talent, which I was very adamant about i believe that was week one where i was just so upset about it um then we can eventually power up where there's like we're just powering up we're, we're we're charging up to go super saiyan right and then at a certain point artist will hit a threshold where he now has enough damage to like threaten the chin you know the chin just can't it, it just aimlessly sit there and let him stack. So I really like that counter pick a lot, and I, I I don't know. I mean, both of these drafts look really good. Where are you, where are you headed with them? I the the Arthas is a big outlier for me because we'll see how it works out in the top lane into the gray main. It's really strong, but I don't think that's going to happen often, and mm -hmm. that's where it's going to be a bit of an awkward spot. So we'll see. Like maybe early game might be easy for the chen but late game is where they start to scale as you were as you were talking about yeah. with the if they go trait build so it's going to one come down to trait two come down to execution and i think three come down to the team fights but you know raw just looking at the drafts on you know who's on what side and all that kind of stuff i give this over to the side of archon i think they scale throughout the game more not synergistically but they scale throughout the game at a better pace whereas the enemy other team is just going to be, be kind of hitting a power spike on the side of black hole so mm -hmm. i give it over to archon but uh immediately we're going to get a pause might be a west coast team. nope central i double check i double checked yeah. my stats before we got into this i was like all right let me tiger it's apparently mouse. Issue, okay. so it's not that big of a deal but either way um overall yeah i give it over to archon what do you think as we're kind of in this pause? i'd actually i actually really like um black holes comp i think it scale it just scales better it's dragon shire yeah. Um, there's no global coming out from the side of Archon, so yeah. there's really no pressure, right? We're just in, we're just gonna be kind of scuff, scuffling, um, just just kind of posturing with each other, and eventually it gets to a point where like Maeve will get a good pool, Jaina will get nanoed, um, and, and the collapse will happen from there, right? Uh, whereas potentially, you know, what sets Archon above, uh black hole in this case i think is like picks right it's going to be like can they get the slide combos can they get the slide stuke off slow mm -hmm. junk rap mine um like for me that that's going to be i guess the decider of this game really um if they can get ahead with with those early game picks get that level lead keep that level lead and then just continue to dominate as the game goes on yeah, no, I'm and I'm just I was hoping that I'd be able to look at level ones, but they didn't even choose level ones just yet. So it, it's also gonna, you know, what kind of scaling do we get from we talked about Arthas. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, we can talk about Jaina as well. Like Jaina does have fingers of frost at level one, mm -hmm. which would allow her to have ten percent increased damage off her frostbite damage, and then you also do have the uh higher regeneration rate as well that on top of the scaling you have throughout the game. So um there is that factor too like like the 10 power spike is going to be a really interesting moment in this game because like i'm looking at the potential blow-ups and it seems like you know like the blow up like you know apocalypse with a ring of frost or something like that that's even terrifying and then maybe a warden's cage like oh, hell in a cell yeah. kind of deal so um i think i think i think we're gonna be seeing some some fun stuff here but we got a ready from one team and i'll go ahead and see uh if they are Hopefully, uh, as well, uh, with the chat while we're sitting here waiting, 
jumping into this game the volume levels are good just let me know cool yeah sounds perfect thank you guys so much but yeah we are gonna be a... jumping in i think what's up the only thing is they said that we are set to world of warcraft as the category oh that's not good. that was the only one that's a good that's a good thing to note thanks guys not sure why that and apparently i sound good now so either way oh, while yeah. he's fixing that <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and let you all know on the left hand side we got the members of black hole we're gonna be seeing frosty wind on the ana vesper on the arthas centurion on the jaina tremor on the diablo and carbon on the Maev. and looking at team archon we're gonna have valimar on the chin i believe that is right on averted mm -hmm. they're on the junker ad tiger's gonna be on Grayman, chijuggy on the etc and weary day on the stukov there we go. We'll see how that goes. The is who's gonna get the level one pick, right? Like, yeah. Do we do we get a level one pick as well? Like, do they do, do they play it aggressive? Does Diablo look for the angle, or is it gonna be one of those things where like they wait for a wave, clear wave, and then just go back in the bottom and just start doing rotations? Because Diablo does need souls. Like, we we need to be aware of the fact that he's gonna be constantly chasing after the souls throughout this entire good game. This Tiger JK jumps in, but they don't find anything just yet. Yeah, and you can see unaverted there with the mine actually just kind of. You know, trying to pick the player who's lazy, right? Uh, just yep. whose mind turns off there for a second. Uh, it happens. I mean, it really does happen. Having the mind out there ready for that uh, is really nice. And now he's got his second mind up on cooldown ready to follow up if uh, a slide does connect. So I think it is going to be up to Trimmer here just not to get slid by the ETC because he might be in trouble if he does, in all honesty. Well, just to note as well, you were talking about Eternal Hunger or trait build for Arthas that was picked up. Now, for anyone that's wondering at home, it is an uncapped quest. It is, you know, 3 out of 10, so you get your reward at 10, but it is uncapped. You keep building that trait. And into a Chen, I mean, Chen's going to sit there and drink every so often. You just sit there and smack him with a sword and just get one of those. Also, if they go into Frozen Tempest at level 4 as well, they're going to easily build that up because Chen loves to sit there and brawl and chug, so... I think it's going to be an easy, easy questing build for this Arthas as they already set it with a 4 out of the 10 stacks. He, yeah, he'll either go at 4. He might go Death. I actually like Death Flow at 4 with this build. Um, just for okay. self-sustain. But if he chooses That's to go... Um, if he chooses to go Talons at 7, then we'll probably see IC... I think it's called IC Bings or... What is it? Um, IC Talons, I think, right? Rune Tap at 7, then you take IC Talons at 4, which increases your attack speed for every second you're slowing something. Um, okay. So it's like a synergy with Rune Tap. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually, ooh, we actually see a pick in the bottom lane there too. Maybe, ooh, Carbon, Weary? New patch, Weary might be in trouble there actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just, w w it depends on what he wants to go at level seven. It looks like he is gonna go Rune Tap here with the ice. Yeah. Talons, I and this, yeah. I think this this pairs way better into what you were talking about earlier in the draft as well, you know, building towards that trait and, you know, that auto attack damage. But it looks like Tiger JK will go for the channel here. I think I think the what I was looking at this is just like, well, you'll get into a fight with Greyman, you wanna have all the tools for that, <laughs> but it's just at the same time it's like, well, you can't build around someone you might not battle the entire game. So this makes a lot more sense than their one v one. They're already sitting at eight stacks on that trade, and we're two minutes and thirty four seconds yeah. in here as um this is a bad spot for Arjana to be in as Chuggy finds a good body block, but that's gonna be Tremor diving on him with the shadow charge they don't find the kill but they manage to keep their jaina just safe and the dragonite kind of uncontested here in the middle lane probably going to knock down the wall uh look to work to the bottom lane potentially get some tower damage in here i don't know if he'll get much else but the level lead is starting to build right we're about almost half a level ahead actually the whole bottom wall is gone so well is going to be taken potentially even a port pressure here off of the dk death um depending on if they hit seven or if etc finds a slide here uh we'll see we'll see how it turns out it's gonna be a little bit of damage here and there they're gonna be pressure mine from junkrat to force back the diablo dragonite will back off but they do get the well and we talked about this in previous weeks and we'll always mention it again because maybe we have new viewers but lane sustain being removed here is so impactful now bottom lane is gonna be so much more difficult to control on the side of Black Hole because Archon can force the fight and if they need to back off and tap well, get mana, help, anything like that, they go to, go to they have to go to mid or they have to go all the way back to their keeper, Hollow Storms. So it's, it's just, it's a really good control factor for the side of Archon, but just peeking up into the top lane, it looks like this has still been a fairly, fairly matched uh, brawl between these two as they've gotten a little damage on each other's front gates, but that's really about it. Arthas having to back out right now as Chen put the aggression onto them and maybe that's that scaling that we were talking about in the earlier game, you know, getting a little lead, who does it really start to benefit here is this might be an invasion tremor in this bottom lane camp 
looking at Trimmer, looking to flip over Shijuggy. Shijuggy still has got his Q up, so he might actually slide in aggressively. Sukov is able to pull? Not at all, actually. Backing up, just putting the sound sound on the objective. Tiger J is doing his best to punch out Trimmer, but he's still full health. And Carbon's actually on the back line. A two-man pull does pick up Tiger. Is he going to trade? There he does. The hard camp for a one-for-one. One. Pretty good, actually, in the favor of Archon. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Black Hole was looking to invade and steal that, but they end up giving over a Grey Mane for a Maev, and that's really not that bad. And so, they'll, they'll get this camp, they get the experience, they won't get much Siege out of it, as it looks like they go ahead and grab themselves the Siege Giants over here. Chen gonna be doing some doubles of rotations. Just to update anyone at home that's wondering, when it comes to our questing talents, Arthas on the level 1 or Tunnel Home is at 13 stacks. We have 10 out of the 20 for the Fingers of Frost and Jaina, 66 souls for the Diablo. Uh, we have 2k on that Jaina baseline quest, if you're wondering as well. One stack for the Wizard Duelist on the Grey Main, and then 12 out of the 20 for the ETC. Rock Rock, they invade on this camp on the left-hand side, McIntyre, but can they steal it? Yeah, this is looking disastrous for Trimmer. I don't know if he had full souls, he didn't. It's just 67. such a hard It's such a hard thing to do, is to take that camp against the Junkrat. And this Junkrat first pick is actually just dominating, right? He just throws down the Sassel charge on the objective, and immediately it's like, hey, hey I dare you to step on it, right? Um, yeah. Diablo kind of has to back off because of it, and... Due to that, he actually is stuck in a silence pull. He gets slid by ETC, and now we see the first fort of the game taken down. Right? I haven't, we haven't lost a mid fort yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so first fort coming out for Archon. This will be a power spike for Arthas, so, Um Arthas is going to yes. start winning top lane. So uh, at this point, it, we'll see if they rotate, and you can even see it here. Um, they have, they're have they going to have to start rotating to these Arthas. He's dead here. There's just no way out, which is really sad. But hopefully we can get a bottom shrine. Hopefully we can get that level 10, right? Uh, Vesper team doing his best to just survive as long as he can. He just wants to buy his team some space on the map. This death isn't terrible. Uh, what needs to happen now is like a musical chairs type situation. They need to start already heading people to the top lane to get ready to retake yeah. top. Because they're going to collapse down... Potentially it'll be a 10 to 10 now. Let's see. You want the Benny Hill music to start playing in the yeah. background when you make your rotation. If you don't hear that, you're not making a quick enough rotation. <laughs> but Centurion's gonna be making that rotation over there. Gonna try and join the friendly team in mid lane. They're gonna grab this camp for top as well, put some pressure up against them, trying to clearing what is now up there. Junkrat now managing bottom lane. Did go into the sticky. Ooh, that's gonna be a lot of damage on the Junkrat. Nice concussion mine, but you're not going anywhere. They will go down right there, and that will be a pick in favor for the members of Black Hole. Also to note, Diablo does finish out souls right there. So they do have that revive when they, they do die in any sort of way coming up. But I also do want to point out it is going to be Wandering Keg for Chen, so we'll keep an eye on how that's going to be utilized in this fight. But I think we have a fight breaking out down here, McIntyre. Yeah, Trimmer takes the bullet right at the beginning, but Carvin gets a great flank here. Chujuggy looking for probably a mosh pit, but he's just going to go down to the breath. Carvin actually eating past Weary Day. Can they W connect? Keg W knocking him away. Yeah, I guess Chujuggy just thought, you know, he... he, he the bullet happened on the Diablo, like, we can definitely kill this, and then Ana was like, wait, actually, I exist, I'm gonna make Diablo's W heal him after his health, uh, and he's able to trade there for one for zero, but you can see here Vespertine just sustaining himself so incredibly well, and Chin might be in trouble here, Centurion coming up with the damage, term as well in the rotation. Yeah, it's a dead Chin, no barrel to get him out, right? He just used it in a team fight, and it's a really good punish coming out from Team Black Hole. I mean, overall, I think Black Hole is playing this really well, and and I would say Archon is actually the one who is misplaying, right? They had a 10-9 window. They yeah. picked an Arthas with the 10-9 window, but that was all they achieved. They ended up trading a one-for-one. -one. Oh, actually, we see Trimmer caught out. That's 100 souls. Can Ana keep him alive? Tiger taking an absurd amount of damage from Centurion as well. Oh, the oh, bomb knocking him out of the marsh. Will it be enough to get him away? Ana doing her best to keep him alive. Juggy no slide out, right? He just slid in. Arthas on the rotation as well. Two for one. Wow, so Trevor is still alive. This is just, this This kind of is like showing the game off, I think, right here, right? Like, they're trying so very hard to kill the Diablo, but they just so happen to pick up Junkrat. Uh, like, mm -hmm. that is like Junkrat's not very good at killing that character, right? You even saw there, you know, he rip tired. But the rip tire knocked him out of the mosh, and then he was mm -hmm. able to just kind of walk around and be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I'm 10% health, but realistically, I have 1,000 health." You know, like, <laughs> can you guys this do Diablo. anything to me? This Diablo has been living through so many insane moments, but we have a Dragonite with a slight talent to your advantage for the members of Black Hole. That's going to be a concussion mine. There's going to be Valimar trying to kick in here. The Elusive Brawler is going to be active. Sleep Dart comes out. They're going to be using the Stagger damage. Wandering Keg. That's defensive. Kick comes out from the Dragonite. Doesn't connect onto them. 
gonna continue to back off right now as Janus teaches in with the Blizzard as well. The Weird Egg gonna throw out a weighted push. So they get a good compression line onto Tremor, but they should be able to back off while he throws out his Fire Stomp, sustaining themselves enough to share up the Balamar in the back line for some shielding for the friendly team. But, but McIntyre, they still have a half a health Dragonite with 30 seconds on and they can forward looking to take a forward, maybe more. There's no Mosh Pit up as well, so they, they, they know that, right? It's a very long cooldown. Uh, Juggy actually looking for the slide on Carbon, but the Sans, it does connect. He, he's able to get out of there potentially. Shen doing his best. Tiger doesn't pick him up there. So Juggy looking probably at Tremor. Tremor gets a nice wall bang against him. Tiger who goes down on a taken out. That's a big play from Weary Day. Centurion also going to fall. Their team just going to do his best. This is what Arthas is built for, right? Uh, raid boss Arthas. I, I assume he's just going to fight it out to the death. There's really nothing else he can do. Diablo was like, I'm gonna hang out for a bit and help, and then they just pieced out. They're like, I'll maybe get souls and I mean, experience in mid. Like, they're just like, they stood there. They're like, where Chen is right now, they stood there watching their friend die and was like, that's not a fight for me. It just dipped into mid lane. Uh, for anyone that's wondering really quickly, the Arthas uh, level one is gonna be at 50 stacks, so that's gonna be uh, doubled. That's gonna be finished over two times. Jaina's uh, missing one stack. She does have baseline quest done, so she's got the ice block. Diablo does have full souls. They do have one stack out of the five on Devastating Charge. Three stacks in the Wisdom Duelist for the Grey Main, and ETC has finished the Rock Rock, allowing him to get a little. He's, he's also uh, he's also going into the D talents there on Arthas, so. We'll see as the game goes on. He could probably take double D at 16, right? Uh, and with that, with that, with that amount of stacks, like he can probably two shot Junkrat if he can get to him, right? Um, Let me see if I can look. Um, bonus damage is 80. Mana restored is 40. Oh, this is trouble. I would honestly just nano the Jaina. Just oh, they the, oh. They, they dive further forward. Grammy with the curse bullet Riptide over the wall. The Riptire is killed before it kills Centurion. They stay alive. Jaina does finish out the figures across level one. Lightning Breath came out. Maya trying to get an umbral bind to pull them in. That's going to be a flailing circle from Stukov. And the Mosh oh. doesn't go off. That would have been a four or five member Mosh right there. But now, looks like they're going to be able to disengage. The, the, uh, the Howling Blast comes out from Arthas. Wandering Keg from Chen's going to push them away. This is a disengage tool. And it looks like they've managed to sustain themselves in that fight. Take down the front wall and back out without giving a kill. But now, Mac, they're chasing. Yeah, and there's not a lot of ultimates here. We do have a Warden's Cage still up, though, and the Mosh Pit is going to be up, obviously, Trimmer stopping it. Mosh is going to hit two. Can anyone get him out? They cannot. Look at Diablo Dance's way to the death. He does have souls, though, so he is coming back. They just need to make sure not to die here. Uh, I was going to say, like, the biggest thing in these fights is, like, does Anna die? Like, if mm -hmm. Anna dies, like, it's all over, right? And... Here we are seeing her get hit by a mosh pit, I think in excitement over the fact that they're potentially chasing them down. Chijungi face checking in. Is it gonna be enough? No, oh, the slide stunts Trevor! That's gonna be a split. Greymane dives in. Best for getting very low here, trying to find their way out. They have no health. They're actually gonna go down right there. That's gonna be Jaina falling as well. They're gonna kick for the forward. Tremor has no souls. If they go down, that's full death time. A power slide through. Oh. Enough to share, and they find another kill. Kicking further forward on the carbon, looking for another kill. They blink away with the Spirit of Vengeance, pulling them in, but keeping themselves alive. This looks like it will be Dragonite over to the side of Archon. The barrel just giving him enough space there to slide away. Um. Yeah, disastrous. I think if they were gonna try for something like that, I think Tremor needed to open with the Q on Diablo and just wall bang immediately before he tried to overpower him. Um, just to, to, to tighten that window up. Uh, but I, I like the play. I would have liked for them to just kind of hang out and realize that they're not 16. We've been seeing a lot in the IHL late teams forcing under level right and now we see a dragon knight pushing in pressuring the keep potentially going to her core you know water elemental coming out pushing it back but once the ellie drops i assume they're just going to dive on in here we go centurion caught out here from the barrel the slide does miss because of the ice block but he just set up for failure he is taken out here dragon knight still just pumping out damage and frosty one caught out right ana cannot get caught and here she is a good trimmer to kill there to keep her alive but she just needs to stay in the back line to stay safe i think this is just going to probably end up being just Actually, Cargo with a massive Warden's Cage in the breath is going to follow up. Can he hit enough Qs to do enough damage? He can't. I don't know. This could be game over. 
Yeah, that was a really advantageous dive back in there, and they're going to turn that around and find another kill, and with that, they could look to end. And you, you actually mentioned, I was, as, as, as you were saying it, like as I was watching all this team fight unfold, but something that you said stuck with me. In the in-house league that we have, there have been so many down talents here, like advantageous fights. And they, some of them have worked definitely, and then there's you know, some that don't. This is definitely one of those situations where it, it did not pay off. It's a momentum that was built way too much, and this looks like it will be poor going down. Centurion will be defending against this. Wandering Kite coming out of the cross the wind, keeping them from the Hall of Storm. Screaming dies in the dark flight. They find a kill on them. Solo dance! The private dance from Digital to Jaina from ETC, and that will be game number one of our best of five series over to the side of our I mean, if I have to be honest with you, Baja, I think one thing that I've learned here is that Grayman is the best character in Heroes of the Storm. He just... Grayman is... He's, he's, why is he so slept on? What What is it? What is it that makes him so slept on? It, I think it's. I think there's honestly it having two kits and two different play styles throws a lot of people off. And and one of my my friends and masters used to say a good gray main knows when to be a worgen and when to be a human. Yeah, I said that right. Sorry, I was just like, I was like, wait a minute, do I have it backwards? But otherwise, because if you don't if you don't get a gray main who dives in, you end up just getting a fuzzy rainer. That's real. Like that that was what they said, and that's what stuck with me. And it's true though, because like. If Greymane never dives in, if you don't go for those Dark Floods, if you don't get that massive burst with Greymane, which is weird to say, but he is an auto attacker that does burst, you know, Dark Flight, Razor Swipe, all of that, you know, you go for the throat as well. If you don't do any of that stuff, yeah, you just, you're just throwing Curse Bolts out and you're auto attacking. And I think that, that Dark Flight in and going from a range into a melee throws so many people off, or at least pushes them away. And I, I don't get it. Like, he's such a versatile character. Like, if someone said, like, Bahamut, I need to learn, like, one assassin in Heroes of the Storm, I'd be like, probably Greymane. He can grab camps, he can he can team fight, he can solo lane, he can four man. Like you put him in any role, he can do it outside of tank, probably, or healer. And he has a 30 second ult CD that just clocks someone for 40% of their health. Like Yeah. 40% of the current health pool. Like, <laughs> all right. 40% of whatever you Boom, currently have. 40%. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know I, why I, they I, made I, it 40%. That is a massive. Do you remember when large... it was 50? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's. <laughs>